right, love it. Fire it up. To go along with some of our recent flow bench testing on our Holly 950, we're going to do some filter testing. And by the way, if you haven't seen that video, this carburetor flows almost 1050 on the flow bench after modification. What we're going to try to do today is do a comparison with uh, different paper and cotton filters. As you can see, we have a, a three inch paper, five inch paper, a couple K&N knockoff filters, and the big dogs, the Velocity stacks. We're going to show you which ones that work well and which ones that don't. So this is our leakage check with the throttle plates closed. And just to show you, the leakage is 9.4 CFM. For the actual filter testing, we have to move the target on the flow bench to five and a half inches of water because our carburetor outflows our 600 CFM bench. No filter is going to be our baseline point. And as you can see, we float about a little over 574 CFM. Just for fun, I asked Josh to do some predictions on the designs that we had, and he gave some very interesting engineering insight. So if this radius actually came out and rolled over further, I think we'd end up with a, a, a higher flowing product. But it's still going to flow really good compared to what, what we're testing. I, I would predict this is going to be a little bit less than that one. I but think, they're still going to be the leaders in what we're testing. I think so. Basically, we've got a sharp edge orifice here with the back cut. This is actually going to generally pull some kind of suction pressure in here because that boundary layer separates and rolls in. Everything in here is going to draw a depression. Mm -hmm. And the reason why this this is here is probably because there's a foam filter and a screen that goes over the top. I think that strap's going to cause an issue too, depending on how it's positioned. So what do you think about the concept of the open top filters? The open top filters are, are really interesting, the disparity between different manufacturers and how they handle the bottom side. I think overall they'll work well, but you'll notice there's significant differences on the bottom side here. This perforated metal top I think is going to actually prove to be a, a significant disruption to flow. Uh, versus this more open style. So here's here's some of our more traditional paper filters, and uh, they're different in that they're not cotton like the other ones we have on the bench. How do you think those would flow compared to the cotton ones? Uh, this will be interesting to see. With the 14 by 5 here, we've got a lot of surface area. Uh, we could debate filtration efficiency and how much dirt or, or particles uh, the paper filters will filter out compared to cotton. But I think with the extra surface area filter uh, of the filter media here, it may not be such a detriment to flow. We also had this Edelbrock filter kit and a RPC 3x14 filter with a RPC lid. The lid's also marketed by Summit as a power lid. The power lid didn't do as well as I thought it would. When we get to the numbers, you'll see. One constant with the filter testing is we'll be using the same drop base for each test. Not surprising, the three inch paper filter with the chrome top scored the lowest on the list. This was down about 82 CFM having no filter. One surprise near the bottom of the list was the Edelbrock filter kit. It flowed 40 CFM down. This RPC filter and power lid is what I use in my car. On the flow bench, we we're down about 32 CFM. I replaced the power lid for the chrome top, and unbelievably, the chrome lid did better than the through filter. It did 5 CFM better. The 5 inch paper filter flowed neck and neck with the 3 inch RPC filter. It was about uh, 2 CFM away, which was really respectable. We didn't have a long enough stud for this test, so we pushed on the cover top with our hands to get a flow number. Next, I'll let you watch the velocity stack test. This thing uh, was 
blowing off the top of the carburetor. We just couldn't believe it. And it actually flowed more when the velocity stack was off. Just for fun, we did a clay radius on the end of the stack and did a test with the strap uh, facing over the boosters. There's no significant difference. Both stacks float about 7 to 8 CFM down, regardless of the clay radius. So one word on velocity stacks. One thing it might do is keep the turbulent air above the carburetor and not mess up the signal when going down the road. We don't have a way to test that here. The big winner out of all of this was just having a drop base on the carburetor. We did a little clay work to bridge the gap uh, between the carburetor and the drop base, and that seemed to help even more. If you set a filter on the drop base, it almost doubles your CFM gain. You can get as much as 8 CFM with a clay uh, radius and a filter. At the end, we did some swapping of lids on filters to see what the deal was. It certainly didn't make sense that having more filter area would equal a lower flow number. So we did some swapping around and kind of came to the conclusion that at least on this bench the filters don't make sense to use. One can theorize that you know maybe there's a little bit of turbulence right below that lid that's causing your flow number to be off. We ran it on the 5 inch paper filter with the open tops and that seemed to do a little bit better than the 3 inch ones. Let us know in the comments what you think. We even went ahead and took apart the power lid. Uh, I'm not even sure how this filters. The media slid right out, it just hooks underneath the edge. We ran it just with the honeycomb. We got almost 10 CFM back. Here is the winners and losers list from good to bad in CFM. Uh, the clayed uh, contoured entrance with the filter set on is probably the best that you can do. Velocity stack, kind of a disappointment. 8 CFM down. Large paper filter was a big win. Definitely affordable. If you have hood clearance issues, the RPC filter seems to do pretty decent. Uh, it has a pretty deep pleat. I'll show you some pictures of it in comparison to the Edelbrock. The power lid was kind of a disappointment. We showed you when we took it apart how it was constructed. Chrome top with the RPC filter was kind of a winner. At the bottom of the list is the 3 inch paper. I'm also a little surprised that the Edelbrock kit is near the bottom as well. Here is the pleat depth difference. The Edelbrock has a one inch pleat depth versus the RPC's inch and roughly an eighth. So we don't have any clue about filter efficiency or how big or small the particles will get caught. Uh, some of these filters might do better than others as far as filtering particles, but as far as airflow goes, more surface area typically wins. The exception is the disguised surface area which we will continue to investigate in the next video coming up soon. So let us know what you think on this. You know, the one thing that I wish I had was a K&N kit just to throw on the bench as a comparison. As much as I hate the idea of running without a filter, I think based on how big the gains are, I'd consider running without one at the track.